Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into the 6th Autumn 2023 update from Gaz Webber. So here we go again, yeah, it's time to bring you another Autumn update, and this week did a little bit of a solar special. So uh, we're going to be going through all the relevant solar cycle uh, years and autumns since 1915. For this uh, update, years all got together for us by our good friend Terry. Thank you, show Terry Scully, for uh, sorting out all of the years. Same years we used on the summer update. Thank you so much, Terry, for sorting out all of the years on the solar special summer and now autumn update. Thank you so much, my friend. I'll go back for you in a moment. Just say that first video today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast, and we're going to be live streaming at 6 p.m. this evening. So uh, we're going to be bringing you our 10 to 14 day. And combining that with loads and loads of long range as well. And that's all to come at 6 pm. So I shall see you live this evening at 6 o'clock. We will also be naming the owl and the fox. Thank you, Shona Richard, for the uh, autumn update number one. Gift number one. You've got two gifts this time. Uh, this is gift number one. Thank you so much, Richard, for uh, for both the gifts. And Particularly for this one. I love it. I love the autumn updates. They're always so vibrant and colourful. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. So, uh, we a couple of weeks ago, we took all of your uh, names for the owl and fox. By the way, I know some of you are a bit wondering where the, where the owl is. I'm obscuring it with the camera. So, let's just turn it off, actually. Let's turn the webcam off. There we go. There is our owl look. Just better. I'll have the webcam sat over. But I think a few people have noticed it. Um, when the webcam's kind of been coming and going. But there it is. Anyway, that's the owl. There's the fox, of course. We've got, uh, I think that's a blackbird is it, or something. And we've got a deer up here. We haven't named those two, but we are naming the fox. And we are naming our, <laughs> our dancing owl. Looks a little bit tipsy, doesn't he? Looks like he's had one too many sanguia. Um, I don't know. A little bit like I <laughs> Some nights in my hotel. Um, no. So, uh, I'm so sorry, everybody. So, uh, yes, we will um, be doing that on the live stream. I've got everybody's names to put onto the name picker. And uh, then the owl and the fox are going to be named. And then we'll go on to gift number two next week. And uh, we'll be naming our little bird on that one. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And hope you're having a lovely Sunday as well. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you so much, Terry. <coughs> oh, dear me. Oh, my goodness gracious me. I might be dead by the end of the year. Thank you so much, uh, Shrian. Uh, also, hashtag Tingab. Unbelievable. Thank you so much, everyone. Right. So, this is how so this is looking on our side of this day from SirHam.net when went on recording this video on the 21st of July. Friday, 21st of July. Got lots and lots and lots of uh, sunspots all over the place, really. Indicative of where we are in the uh, solar cycle, which is heading towards solar activity. However, solar activity is officially at low levels. Uh, despite all of those sunspots, and is expected to remain at low levels for the next three days. But we are moving inexorably uh, now in towards the uh, maximum phase of solar cycle number 25. And uh, so, very simply, we're going to be looking at uh, autumns, you know, for this phase of the solar cycle. Uh, in their various respective solar cycles. So we begin with the autumn of 1957. Here we go then. With above average heights, high press centres over and to the west of the UK and Ireland. And that leaves us pulling in the wind from like a northwesterly direction. So quite an anti-cyclone. So I reckon that's relatively dryish sort of autumn. Although September 1957 is actually quite wet. But then I think it gets drier. Uh, through uh, through October and November. Uh, 1958, also anti-cyclone. There's something, sometimes a two-year overlap, of course, with some of these solar cycles. Not all of them, but most of them have a two-year overlap, um, actually. So this one, 1958, also 
with uh, anti-cyclic steel, but this one, the high pressure is much more towards Scandinavia. Uh, so this is a dry sort of easterly type steel. Again, I think it has a wet September in uh, 1958, and then we must see must have seen the high pressure taking over later on in the uh, autumn. So two anticyclonic autumns for 758 to start us up. Then we go through to 1968. This one also has quite a bit of high pressure uh, to our north up here has lower pressure to uh, lower pressure out in the Atlantic a little bit of everything going on uh, with that one it has um has quite a wet September I think down in the south quite unusually so dry September up in the north but very wet down south with some floods actually to the south of London I think we have the middle part of September 1968 but it has a very warm and a uh, very warm October I think it's warm and wet in October you can see why that will be with winds like coming up from the south but I think then I think November starts getting colder uh, so quite it's quite a, a long way to get the autumn going get a proper chill going but it does eventually arrive i think in november of uh, 68 but um does have a very warm october two very warm back-to-back -back octobers in 68 and 69 actually and uh quite interestingly um then we go through to the next show cycle so this is 1979 this one is a mild atlantic driven rather forgettable uh, autumn. So, of course, we have a very, very, very cold winter for 78, 79, um, and a, quite a cold spring as well, and a pretty poor summer, but by the autumn, the weather is beginning to warm up a little bit, and uh, and it's just rather nondescript sort of uh, autumn, that one, a lot of westerly winds. We've got the autumn of 1980, so this is another, like, two-year overlap. We've got the autumn of uh, 1980 showing up next, again, with lots of low pressure across northern parts of Europe, some higher pressure towards Greenland uh, as well, low pressure off the Atlantic. I think that was quite a dry, warm September, actually, in 1980. Uh, and then October is cold and wet, and uh, November is also a cold and wintry month, and there's even some snow around for bonfire night in uh, 1980, which is called very unusual for the 5th of November. So we've got a very cold and frosty uh, bonfire nights that uh, we remember from the uh, 1980s. Uh, then we have 1989. Again, make sure you tell you, I'm sorting out all of these years. Thank you so much, Terry. Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, my friend. Got 1989. This is a dry and warm autumn. Um, very extended summer. The summer of 1989 begins in May and is still going into September and October. So uh, lots of dry and warm weather in September 1989. October 89 is also relatively uh, dry and quite warm uh, as well. It finally starts turning much more autumnal in uh, November, but a delayed autumn, really, with a very, very, very extended summer in 1989. And then again, two year over, so we've got 1990, so it's a much more unsettled autumn with uh, below average heights, low pressure across much of northern West Europe, higher pressure is out into the Atlantic this time um so the thing with that particular autumn is that uh, september is about average temperature wise but rather mixed with some wet weather at times october is warm um but sometimes quite wet and then it starts getting colder in uh, november of 1990 um setting up potentially quite a cold winter in 1990 1990, 1991. Well, I say potentially it was actually. I don't about it because, because this is like what um, <laughs> 20, uh, 30 years ago or something. So uh, it was quite a cold winter for 1990. One of the first hints of that begin in November of 1990. Uh, we've got 1999 as our next autumn. This with high pressure or Scandinavia, low pressure. Is down to south. This has a very warm September, a hot September, especially the first half of the month. But uh, the whole of September, I think it's the warmest since 
up to that point since 1949, but was superseded by some of the Septembers afterwards, most notably 2006. But uh, anyway, very, very warm uh, September. October and November are rather nondescript sort of bumps as well. Uh, uh, not a particularly exciting autumn for that one. Overall, relatively warm and uh, often quite dryish, I think, in the autumn of 1999. And then 2000 is very different. This is a wild autumn. This is the autumn of the flooding rains, and not hard to see why with this big trough of low pressure from the Atlantic into as if you're parked over top of the UK and Ireland. The, the Atlantic basically picked up its contents and dumped it <laughs> over the top of Ireland and the UK. Or well, that's how it felt anyway. <laughs> from around mid-September onwards, there was a phenomenally wet spell from uh, mid-September through to uh, the early part of December of 2000 with just continuous rains and, uh, and eventually as the autumn progressed also also um, gales at times as well as some quite stormy weather later in October and into uh, into November. But the main thing that we remember for the autumn of 2000 is be phenomenally wet weather with the flooding rains and uh, and we don't want to repeat of that one <laughs> I wouldn't have thought but uh, that was exceptionally wet. Uh, autumn back in the turn of the millennium. And then our last autumn is 2012. And this one's also quite a wet autumn as well. Not not quite as bad as 2000. Not quite as wet as 2000. But it is a sort of wet signal with below average heights across the north and uh, the west of Europe. This also has a bit of a blocking signal in the Atlantic. So not only is it quite a wet autumn, has quite a wet September, and uh, also October, November has, has quite a bit of rain at times as well. But not only is it quite wet, it's also quite cool as well. We haven't had many cold autumns since 1993. This is one of them. You probably wouldn't put, put it down to cold autumn, but certainly cooler than a lot of the autumns that we've had since our last really cold autumn, which was a long, 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 long time ago now, back in uh, 1993. So this is one of the cooler ones, along with 2008, 2019, as well, maybe, to some degree. But most autumns tend to be uh, really warm um, these days. But that was one of the cooler, wetter autumns that we remember back in 2012. Setting up the cold winter, 2012, 2013, of course. Right, let's start going through all of that then. So this is how all September's combined are coming out for this part of the solar cycle. And it is an unsettled signal with below average heights, low pressure in the Atlantic and into northern and west Europe as well. We've got high pressure across southern parts of Europe. Remember, there can be years of deviate. So 1989 was a very dry and warm September, for example. So there are going to be years that deviate as ever. With any trend, there will be deviations and years that are doing their own thing but averaging it all out we come away with quite a wet unsettled signal for many of those septembers all octobers combined this part of the solar cycle also looking uh unsettled with below average heights in the north atlantic and into northern europe as well bringing in the wind from off the atlantic like that so a wet signal unsettled atlantic german signal for the octobers very different November. How interesting. So all November's combined with this phase of the solar cycle. Then sets up high pressure towards Iceland, which is quite an interesting place to have high pressure because it would imply that a lot of these November's term significantly, not only significantly drier, but also significantly colder with winds tending to come in much more from an easterly direction. Got 1918 with that, for example, which did have uh, a very cold and wintry start to uh, November, of course. But we've also got 2000, which isn't remember for any cold weather, really, in November, and was just <laughs> just exceptionally wet. So as I said, it was always used to sort of deviating and doing something differently. But overall, it does look as though, uh, for this phase of the solar cycle, we tend to get, uh, or we tend to favour, like a transition into something uh, rather colder and drier after a wet and relatively mild or warm, warmish um, September, October, we tend to, tend to transition into a drier, colder signal in the November. And then finally, this is how all autumns combined are looking for this particular phase of the solar cycle that we are currently in, heading towards the solar maximum. 
And uh, it is an unsettling low for all back of September and October. Remember, November does something very, very different. So it's one of those free monthly analogs that doesn't tell you everything that you need to know about the overall season. And we're done. Very interesting update this week. Thank you so much, uh, Terry, for sorting out all of those uh, years for us. Thank you so much to Richard for our amazing two gifts. And uh, especially for gift number one that we see just there with our owl, our fox, and our other um, wildlife. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. Okay, so that's it for the sixth autumn update. Not the longest, by any means, um, but with vital data. So I hope you found this one interesting and informative. Yeah, please like, share, subscribe. And uh, if you've got any questions, then uh, I will do my best to endeavour to answer them on our live stream at 6pm this evening, where we will be naming our... <laughs> our owl and also our fox so i shall see you a little bit later <laughs> what's he doing what's he doing what's he doing you're going what's he doing what's he doing i shall see you a little bit later on um for that one and uh, we will see <laughs> long range with that too as well as doing our 10 to 14 day thank you so much you hashtag team gab uh, richard terry and shrian and that uh, we shall see you a little bit later <laughs> for our live stream at 6 p.m enjoy the rest of your sunday morning slash afternoon and for this sixth autumn 2023 update, that's all for now. <laughs> and thanks so much.